Well, it's nice to virtually meet everyone. My name is Andrew. You've got Tyler here as well. Hey, guys. And we're excited to talk to you about uh, the Matrix Profile API. This is a code base that we've been working on, and we believe it presents a novel solution to time series data mining that you can use in several different languages. So a little bit more detail about where we'll be going in this presentation. We'll start out by giving you some background about the Matrix Profile Foundation. We'll then answer the burning question, what exactly is the matrix profile? We'll highlight a number of use cases and applications that the matrix profile is great for. We'll talk about the matrix profile API specifically and how you can use it to quickly get up to speed on using the matrix profile. And then we'll wrap up by discussing some of our specific libraries and other resources that you can take advantage of. So who is the matrix profile foundation? Well, you've already met Tyler and myself. But along with Frankie Cancino, Jack Green, and Francisco Bischoff, uh, we are an, a group of uh, open source software developers that are devoted to promoting the matrix profile data structure, as well as the associated algorithms that are used to compute and leverage it. Now, that sounds like a, a pretty strong claim. Why would a group of people be so interested in promoting something like the matrix profile and spending all this time on it? And that's because we believe that the matrix profile is a revolutionary new way to approach time series analysis. So a little more specifically, the matrix profile is a data structure and a set of associated algorithms that solves the dual problem of anomaly detection and motif discovery. Now, uh, for anyone who's worried about extensive mathematical notation, don't worry, we're not going to do that in this presentation. We're gonna focus on visual uh, examples that will hopefully make some of these points clear. It's also worth calling out that the matrix profile does have applications for both batch and streaming processes. Now, this is not something we're going to get into, but you can feel free to reach out to us to learn more about this through some of our resources at the end. All right, so just some background on the matrix profile. This illustration here will give you an idea of how, it, how it's computed. Um, so the distances are actually based on Z normalized Euclidean distance. Uh, if you can recall Euclidean distance, uh, values that are closer to zero represent similarity, whereas values further away from zero mean that they're dissimilar. So in this example, we're actually computing the distances across the time series starting at the second subsequence. Once all the distances are computed, uh, an exclusion zone is applied to avoid trivial matches and the minimum distance is captured and the ma matrix profile distance is below. So the exclusion zone is actually important to avoid the trivial match and a trivial match is considered to be something that is a match on itself or a match very similar in that region. So the first use case we're actually going to discuss is pattern mining. So this is known as motifs in the matrix profile verbiage. Um, so here's a synthetic time series plotted below, and it should make it very clear what a motif is in this use case. We actually computed the matrix profile using a subsequence length of 32. So that means that there's 32 observations per subsequence. And if you recall that 32 length subsequence is slid across the entire time series and all the distances are computed, the representation of the matrix profile is plotted below. You can see that there's a couple valleys there on around 600 and a little before that uh, representing repeated patterns. We'll see how this looks in close up on the next slide here. You can see that there's one motif pair found and the small subsequences of those motif pairs are plotted. So looking at it from a zoomed out, zoomed out view and relative to the time series itself, we can see that the first motif is highlighted in red, whereas neighboring subsequences are highlighted in black. These highlighted uh, subsequences, the neighboring subsequences can actually be the second, third, fourth, or fifth degree. Uh, and this is all parameter tuning. The second and third motif pairs actually don't have any neighbors based on the parameters that we set. Moving on to another uh, common use case with matrix profiles is anomaly detection. 
These are also known as discords in matrix profile speak. So this data set here is actually the New York City taxi data set where there's passenger counts summed up on a 30 minute interval. Excuse me. You can see below that the red stars denote the discords. And if you recall the Euclidean distance concept that zero means something similar, whereas something larger than zero means dissimilarity, you can definitely see that here visually in the matrix profile plot below. Another important use case for uh, time series analysis is something called pattern summarization. So imagine that you want to visually see what's the most common pattern across my whole time series. In this case, we have a pretty trivial example where we concatenated two time series together of pigs and they were cut uh, to measure their arterial blood pressure. The first time series in blue is the first pig and the second is in an off pink color. So looking at the snippets, we have this plot here. Uh, the snippets actually highlighted in red and the uh, subsequences most similar to that snippet are highlighted in orange. And note that it represents the first pig that we saw. Uh, so looking at the second snippet, it is coincidentally the second pig and uh, representing all those subsequences as well. Another common use case or other ways how to how you could apply this is thinking of it in an EKG setting where you're measuring a patient's heartbeat. You could see what's normal for that patient over a given period of time. Another important and useful analysis tool is clustering with time series. So matrix profile has this new distance measure called MPDIST and it considers two time series to be similar if many subsequences are similar to one another, regardless of the order. And that's something important to note here because order matters in some use cases. In this use case, uh, you can see that in cluster one, that the order definitely doesn't matter because the spacing between the peaks are further out. Whereas if you use something like dynamic time warping, this would actually be a huge factor based on the warping window. Now, Tyler has already walked us through several very compelling examples of the matrix profile. So your next question might be, how much effort is it to code up these analyses? Are we talking hundreds of lines of code? Like how complex is this? Well, by developing the Matrix Profile API, or MPA, which is a common code base in Python, R, and Golang, we believe we have made it extremely easy for you to do all of these analyses on your own data. Now, the MPA is structured in a way that matches how you normally think of applying the Matrix Profile. The first thing you do is you compute the Matrix Profile. The second piece is you, ha you have to discover something about the Matrix Profile. A couple of examples we've seen are using the matrix profile to discover discords or to discover motifs, as well as specific time series snippets. Now, once you've discovered something, you need to visualize it in a way that makes sense to you and to the audience you're conveying this information to. Now, we have taken those three core functionalities and we've wrapped them into a single high-level functionality called Analyze. This is our user-friendly interface for beginners where you can simply pass your time series directly in and start pulling out some of these uh, applications that we've already shown. Now, as you become more familiar with the matrix profile with MPA, you can dig further into each of the core components and this will enable further exploration so that your analysis can become even more powerful. Now, as we mentioned before, you can visit all of our code and see it on GitHub. We have our Python uh, implementation known as Matrix Profile, our R library TSMP, our Golang library known as Go Matrix Profile. And for those of you who are specifically interested in pure uh, similarity search, we have a bonus Python library called MassTS. So you can learn more about us at our website, matrixprofile.org. Uh, you can talk with us and interact with us on our uh, Discord channel. You can feel free to tweet us at Matrix Profile or visit us on LinkedIn.
So thank you very much for listening to our presentation and good luck motif hunting.